Hey folks, how you doing? Mike here again. Uh, let's take a look at books. I've got some nonfiction books here. Zombie Holocaust. This is a cool book printed in England. It's uh, $20 US. And it looks at the zombie phenomenon all throughout, uh, well, the history of pop culture. Uh, starting with films like White Zombie and The Haitian Zombies all the way up through 28 weeks uh, 28 weeks and days later and more movies like that. Here I just passed uh, uh, Shockwaves with Peter Cushing. Um, it talks about zombie influence on movies and TV and books and comic books. And uh, there's even a chapter in the back about zombie candies and records and songs and uh, it's cool stuff zombie holocaust by uh, david flint it's a british book but it is does have an american printing and uh, it's pretty cool stuff a book called horror by kim newman now this book is uh Let's see, 360 pages with a very small print index. And it starts in the silent era and is divided by decade. And uh, within each decade, there's a list of some popular movies by alphabetical order. Here in the 80s, for example, we see Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer followed by The Hitcher. And uh, each movie has an entry with the year, the country of origin, the director, the screenwriter, and the stars, followed by a synopsis and a brief review. Um, this is a really cool book. Uh, over 340 uh, entries in here, plus there's essays spread throughout. Like, here's an essay on cannibalism in the movies, and these are separated, but just randomly placed throughout. Here's one on slasher movies. Uh, let's see, I'm just flipping through at random here. Occult cinema. And, uh, it, you know, the in bold there are the movies that are covered in this book. But uh, everything from Misery in the 90s to The Stepfather in the 80s, to Suspiria in the 70s, and uh, The Wizard of Gore in the 60s, to The Curse of Frankenstein in the 50s, to The Wolfman in the 40s, The Black Cat in the 30s, and uh, The Phantom of the Opera in the period called 1896 to 1929. So uh, there is an essay at the beginning called The Beginnings. Well, there's an editor's note and then an essay called Beginnings. Then a section from 1826 to 1929. There we see Lon Chaney uh, Sr in that crazy London After Midnight makeup um, from 1927. And then uh, after the 1896 to 1929 uh, chapter, there is a chapter on every decade from the 1930s right up through to the 2000s. And uh, let's see, the 19, I'll just show you the 1930s. Each chapter begins like this. Here's the 1930s, big picture. And then there's an essay about horror, horror films in the 1930s. A lot of reading. And then uh, it begins with the movie entries. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Dracula, Frankenstein... M, freaks, great stuff.
and then the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Uh, and, and again, an essay on werewolves. Cool book from 2011, Carlton Books, 24.95 US, uh, 17.99 in Britain, no Canadian price given. If I didn't already say, 360 pages. This is a really cool book. Then uh, Jason Zinneman, hardcover here, Shock Value. How a few eccentric outsiders gave us nightmares, conquered Hollywood, and invented modern horror. This is uh, more of a critical book. There's really no photos to speak of in this book, except for one glossy little section somewhere near the one-third mark. We see a few uh, photos there. But it's uh, mainly, mainly text. And um, this is written from a critical point of view, a bit of an academic point of view, um, covering somewhat of the Hollywood business aspect. Also, uh, movie criticism. Uh, a bit erudite, a bit snobbish in its tone. But still, a uh, lot of good insight in here to directors, of course, like Craven and Carpenter, but also guys like uh, De Palma and Polanski and the horror that can be found in their movies, which aren't generally considered horror movies. So he takes a tack to try to be a little bit different by stating that guys like that made horror movies. Um, politics is mentioned in here, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, but it, you know, it may, it, but each chapter, each section mainly focuses on uh, a movie or a director. Like this chapter, Shocker Awe, focuses on uh, William Peter Blatty and William Friedkin in the making of The Exorcist. Uh, well, another chapter focuses on uh, Brian De Palma and Carrie. But also, while also mentioning films like Blowout and uh, how he was influenced by uh, Kurosawa's Throne of Blood, uh, a whole chapter on Dan O'Bannon writing Alien called Stomaching It, uh, an endorsement on the back by Guillermo del Toro, if that means anything to anyone. I'm not a huge fan, but. This is a cool book, hardcover, uh, $25.95, $30 Canadian, 274 pages with an index, and uh, tons of endnotes, so uh, the sources are immaculate, which is why I say it's a, kind of an academic book. And uh, this book is kind of the same type of book, but much less academic, much more accessible, much more entertaining, by David Konow. Conal, Real Terror. Um, there's the back cover. The Definitive History of the Horror Genre. This does not have endnotes, but it does have a pretty thorough index. 595 pages. Just one little section of photos in the middle. So uh, if you're looking for a picture book, this isn't it. It's all text, which I love. Great reading in here, great stories. Uh, 17 chapters with an introduction, epilogue, sources, acknowledgments, and index. So there are a source list, but not really endnotes. And uh, each chapter, again, focuses on a certain, a certain uh, movie or subgenre. I'll just uh, flip through trying to find the beginning of a chapter. So I can give you an example. Uh, chapter 7, Giving the Devil His Due. There's a brief explanation of the chapter. Uh, and for chapter 7, Giving the Devil His Due, it says, How the Omen Tried to One-Up the Exorcist. How Stephen King launched his career by giving a tormented nerd psychic powers. And how the Italian Troika of Argento, Bava, and Fulci brought a new foreign flavor to fear. So, uh, you know, that's chapter 7, for example. I'll give you one more example. Um, chapter 12, Long Night at Camp Blood. 
how Sean Cunningham started a major studio feeding frenzy with Friday the 13th, which launched a big franchise for Paramount, sequel mania, and outrage from critics and, and parents groups, parental groups. Um, there's great stories, history, anecdotes, interviews, a lot of research went into this book. Uh, the back, it just the first uh, sentence of the back, from the cabinet of Dr. Caligari to paranormal activity, from blockbusters to cult classics, the author explores horror's all-time highs and lows, discussing why the, gen why the genre has been overlooked, and investigates what makes a film an unexpected success or a commercial bust, chronicling the evolution of the horror gen genre and tracing reactions to films that grew darker, bloodier and frighteningly more realistic as filmmakers broke through cinematic conventions. There's, um, you know, stories, there's insights from the people who made the movie, there's insights from fans uh, of the movie who went on to make movies, guys like Eli Roth, for example, talk about how movies from the uh, 70s and 80s influenced him. Um, and there's authors from the sources themselves. There's quotes and interviews from the guys themselves. You know, Craven, Carpenter, Romero, the usual gang, John Landis. Uh, plenty of great stories about the movies that us horror fans know and love. Out of all the books I'm going to show you, this is probably would be my top recommendation: Real Terror by David Conow. It's uh, listed at eighteen ninety nine American, twenty one ninety nine Canadian, Saint uh, Thomas Dunn Books, um, K O N O W David Conow R E E L Real Terror, the scary, bloody, gory hundred year history of classic horror films. I really love this book. I've read it twice, and I probably will read it again. Here's a fun book from nineteen ninety seven that accompanied a TV series made by the BBC. This is by BBC Books. Clive Barker's A to Z of Horror. Cool picture of Christopher Lee on the back. This is a bit of a disorganized book, although there is, a, there is an index. It's uh, 256 pages, and it is a companion to a BBC television series of the same name from 1997. Uh, this is listed at £12.99. There's not even an American or Canadian price on here. I found this uh, way back in 1997 or 98 at, in the bargain bin at a Walden Books when they still existed in the mall, when uh, malls were still the place to go. Um, got this maybe for like five bucks, and it's an awesome book. Uh, compiled by a guy named Stephen Jones, but Clive Barker had a lot of input into the TV series, and this is the book that accompanies it. And it's A to Z of horror, because the conceit is, here's the table of contents, and it's A for American Psycho, B for Beelzebub, C for Chaos, D for The Devil Rides Out, I for Innocence, you know, things like that. Um, so... It's not organized by decade or anything like that. It's organized by, you know, subject matter. Um, here, for example, G for Grim Tales. All the illustrations are by Clive Barker. I love his drawings. So talented. Uh, color and black and white photos. This isn't the kind of book that's, you know, very highbrow. There's probably more pictures than there is writing uh, but it's fun it's a fun book that you can you know breeze through while still uh, learning this is the kind of book that was you know I got it when I was about 20 21 but it would have been perfect for me at like age 13 or 14 when I was really getting into it because this is a great introduction it's a bit out, it's, you know, 18 years outdated now, but it's a great introduction to horror movies, at least up until the year of 1997. Uh, you know, it covers all the classics up until that point, and uh, as we know, 
classics never die. So information on here for films like Halloween and Dracula and The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby and, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, that never changes. It's the history is the history. And uh, there's lots. Of, here's a creepy picture. An autographed picture from the real John Wayne Gacy. Now that is creepy. And, uh, you know, there's not entries on specific movies, but, uh, well, there, well, there are small entries. Like, here's a little box on The Raven um, under a little article called The Selected Films of Roger Corman. And, uh, but it's just really like a hodgepodge of pictures and different information about horror movies. So it's a cool, cool little uh, book to have. Here is a gift I got when I was 13 years old. This book was printed in 1990 and since has seen a second printing, which is at least twice as long. This is 372 pages with an index. Karloff and Lugosi. The Story of a Haunting Collaboration by Greg Mank. Greg Mank, uh, if you're familiar with the Universal DVD releases of uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, Bride of Frankenstein, The Wolfman, he shows up on a lot of those documentaries and even does a few of the commentaries. He is a uh, film historian, and uh, this, is the this is a first edition, rather expensive from like a private press. My uncle... Uh, gave this to me as a gift as a 13 year old and uh, it really focuses on the collaboration and the rivalry of Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi who is uh, my favorite classic old-time horror actor Bela Lugosi is and Karloff uh, is right up there there's um, plenty of pictures throughout although not so many that it's become silly. There's tons of reading. It's just a really classy book. It's embossed here. I doubt you can probably find this anymore, but there is a second edition that I've seen on Amazon that I think is like 600, 700 pages. So by the same author, so greatly expanded upon. Um, which I would love to get and read, but I've read this uh, all the way through twice and, you know, pieces of here and there many times over the past 25 years. And uh, there's just great behind-the-scenes stories <clears throat> from all these classic movies. I mean, everybody thinks of Bela Lugosi as Dracula and Boris Karloff as Frankenstein's, uh, Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein, Frankenstein... Don't call me Frankenstein, it's Frankenstein. Um, but, you know, they played so many more roles in their respective careers and made a ton of movies together. Uh, this debunks a lot of myths, proves a lot of rumors true, proves a lot of rumors false. Uh, really cool, really in-depth, really fun to read, a bit academic, but... Not so much that it's snobby. It's just just great. Like chapter 16, Karloff's Last Act. I mean, I'm not a book reviewer. I don't know how to review books. I'm just showing you some cool things that are from my collection that I think uh, you guys would enjoy. And most of these you can still find. And uh, I think you can find the second edition of this, which is probably better than the first because I said it's twice as long. So this is Karloff and Lugosi by Gregory Mank, M-A-N-K. And uh, this is uh, great. Really just uh, so much stuff. There's one picture I wanted to show you. Um, if you've seen documentaries on Lugosi or read about Lugosi or even have seen a Martin Landau portray him and Ed Wood. You know what happened towards the end of his life. Well, here is a picture from 1955 at 125 pounds in a drug rehabilitation clinic. That is a heartbreaking picture of a hero, 
of mine, Bela Lugosi. I mean, unbelievable. What, well, what he went through. And uh, it's a sad story. But uh, he did live for a while after this. Um, and, uh, well, I don't want to get emotional. But, the story of Bela Lugosi, it's all in it's all in here. Boris Karloff, their rivalry, their sometimes friendship. It's great stuff. Okay. Uh, two books that focus on I have three books left. Two books that focus exclusively on one movie. This is Alfred Hitchcock in the Making of Psycho by Stephen Ribello. This was uh, really the basis of that movie Hitchcock with uh, Anthony Hopkins and Helen Mirren. They used a lot of the facts in this book to make that uh, movie. Um, this does not, this is not an overview of Alfred Hitchcock's career. This is a step-by-step -step telling of how the movie Psycho was made. And I, I'll read you the content list just so there's a forward uh, and the chapters are as follows, and once I read you the chapter list, that'll be enough said, because you'll have an overview. Uh, the Awful Truth, The Atrocities of Ed Gein. Uh, so it goes through the original story of the real-life uh, inspiration for the movie. The Novel by Robert Block is Chapter 2. Chapter 3, The Director, Alfred Hitchcock. Chapter 4, The Deal, Hitchcock Outmaneuvers the Studio. Chapter 5, The Screenplays, Writing is Rewriting. Chapter 6, Pre-Production, the Studio, Technical Crew, Casting, Production Design, Wardrobe, Makeup, and Hitchcock vs. Censors, Round 1. <laughs> Chapter 4, Shooting, A Set Divided, The Director Innovates, Hitchcock Amuses Himself. Post-Production, Chapter 8, Retakes, Quibbles, and Indecision, The Sound of Mother, The First Screening, Sounds and Music, and Hitchcock vs. Censors, Round 2. Chapter 9, Publicity. This is really a fun chapter. Uh, the care and handling of Psycho. Uh, all the uh, press that went out there. Uh, talks about how they wouldn't sit people after the movie started. Um, chapter 10, the release, The World Goes Psycho. And uh, chapter 11, Afterglow, Afterglow and Aftermath. And then uh, cast and credits, The History of Psycho on Video. And uh, a brief overview of Hitchcock's films. There is an index, and there is a, uh, a note on the sources. Fairly straightforward, and what I just told you is what it is. And uh, this came out in 1997, I believe. 19, December 1998, first edition. So uh, if you're a fan of Psycho, find this. And then... Uh, about 10 years later, to avoid feigning, keep repeating. Repeating? To avoid feigning, keep repeating. It's only a movie. It's only a movie. Wes Craven's The Last House on the Left. The only thing these two movies have in common are these two books. This is also a step-by-step -step the making of a cult classic. This goes through uh, everything about Last House on the Left with obsessive compulsive detail there's plenty of black and white pictures some color pictures tons of writing interviews with everyone you could think of from Steve Chapin Harry Chapin's brother who helped write the music to uh, Wes Craven to fans and uh, there's even a chapter on Last House ripoffs such as House on the Edge of the Park and um, Night Train Murders, and uh, the new Last House on the Left, Rip-Offs and Rehashes, this chapter is called. This is a British book by uh, David Zulkin, sorry, S-Z-U-L-K-I-N. Uh, I love this movie, so this book is a great companion piece to The Last House on the Left. Sex Crime of the Century, which was an alternate title. And here we see Krug and company on the back cover, David Hess. 
which was also an original or an early alternate title, Krug and Company. Um, the story, the meaning behind the mayhem, so much the planning, uh, excerpts of the actual shooting script are in here. Reprints of original drive-in ads, uh, stills, all kinds of stuff. Even uh, a 45, which is uh, last house radio spot ads given out to radio stations. So, the making of the last house on the left. And that brings us to our final book, Wes Craven, The Man and His Nightmares. Uh, not much to say about this, but if you're a Wes Craven fan, you'll love it. It's Wes Craven's biography. And uh, I'm not going to tell you all about it, because you know what a biography is, and you know who Wes Craven is. Other than to say it is 1695 U.S., 1995 Canadian. It's by a guy named John Woolley, W. W O O L E Y. Uh, three two hundred and sixty two pages, with an index. You know, charting his career from uh, charting his life from a little kid to his teaching career to Last House on the Left and Hills Have Eyes to uh, the eighties and the Swamp Thing and Nightmare on Elm Street, and uh, you know through the 90s and Scream and everything. Even that uh, crazy drama he made, Music of the Heart or whatever the heck that was called, uh, that uh, he wanted to make, you know. Um, uh, there's just a lot of good information in here, and it's a, it, it's a great read if you are a fan of Wes Craven. Look at this chapter. There's even a whole chapter on the people under the stairs. Vastly underrated movie. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the look at the look on the look at books, which I know is a corny title. I will not title the video that, but uh, here they are, just some from my collection. I'll do what I always do and go back over them. Zombie Holocaust, horror by Kim Newman. Shock Value by Jason Zinneman. The Pick of the Litter. Real Terror by David Konow. A real history of horror films. Entertaining and informative. Clive Barker's A to Z of horror. Uh, Karloff and Lugosi, The Story of a Haunting Collaboration. Alfred Hitchcock in the Making of Psycho by Stephen Ribello. Wes Craven's The Last House on the Left, and Wes Craven, The Man and His Nightmares. And P.S. as a bonus, in hardback, horrifyingly mad, more than 50 years of classic spirits to scare you silly. And I love Mad Magazine, and this is one of those that you can find at Barnes & Noble, in the uh, bargain bin, if you're lucky enough. Got this for 10 bucks. It's a hardcover with uh, literally 50 years of spoofs. Exorcist, Rosemary's Baby, The Blair Witch Project, The Exorcist, Rosemia's Boo Boo, The Bland Witch Project, The Calamityville Horror, The Shiner, uh, I mean, it goes all the way back to the beginning of Mad Magazine when they actually used to print cartoons, like actual comic strips, to uh, the six cents, you know. Uh, and it's not all movie parodies. There's Sergio Aragonis and his A Mad Look at Ghosts. This is just a fun book. Godzilla Takes Manhattan. Of course, Don Martin is in is in this. Uh, Don, some of his great work. New movie monsters from the business world. 
the Goldberg, the gold brick that walked like a man. Now that's from the 60s, so, you know, a little bit dated, that, that one. Here's a little comic strip called The Werewolf. This is just funny. Frankenslime. Just funny stuff. Funny stuff. So, uh, horrifyingly mad. Alfred E. Newman. What? Me worry? Um, okay, guys, thanks. I hope you enjoyed the uh, look at uh, just some of my nonfiction horror books. And uh, I thought I'd do something a little different. What the hey? And uh, you guys have a good night. And uh, I'll be back soon with my April Blu-ray update. I know I'm way behind and I have to do May. And uh, we're in the middle of June, so then I'll do June. And I still have Doctor Who videos to make. And uh, ideas come all the time. Sometimes you don't feel well and sometimes you do. And... You know, I've been making a few videos. I hope you guys enjoy them, and I've certainly been enjoying yours. So, uh, thanks a lot, guys. Have a great weekend. It's Friday night here in Philadelphia at uh, 8 o'clock. So, uh, time to go out and maybe uh, have some fun, call a few friends. But, uh, need to take a shower first. So, okay, that's that's it for me. Have a great weekend, guys. Peace. Take Take it easy.